بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على المؤوث رحمة الله عالمين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد This is the second uh, session إن شاء الله for the day uh, number two and uh, as I uh, promised that I will be dealing with the first ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha and the first ayah is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Alhamd means praise so you're praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who deserves to be praised if you look into the 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 blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the creation of human beings starting from the beginning until the actually the creation of the whole universe not just the human beings or the angels we're talking about everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you will see the uniqueness of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will be able to witness the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that creation subhanallah the most excellent way of creation let us restrict ourselves to the human self. look at the origin when you are in that place which is so I mean small the womb of the mothers you are in that place I mean uh, as one of the most fragile entities but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a new protection on top of protection uh, protection on top of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Zumar fi dhulumatin thalath you know so he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put protection the protection in the womb you know that very strong fortress that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put to protect you from any evil that can come externally and feed you in a way you don't need to go to the bathroom taken from the best your mother is eating you know you're protected for at least nine months and then Allah wants to get you out of that place and look at the place where you are coming out you know I'm telling you the truth if not because of the little of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will be cut into pieces because the place is so small to accommodate this big human being that is coming from from the womb but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought you out of that place peacefully with no single scratch in you. How much do you pay for that? Allah doesn't need anything from you. He talked to you about this fact so that you reflect upon it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَقَدَرْنَا فَنِعْمَ الْقَادِرُونَ If you want to see the best in terms of ability and capability to do something is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is just a bit. If we stop here, we can talk a lot. We spend hours talking about the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your creation. So that you will know that the only one who deserves to be praised is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah loves this word so much. Ali ibn Abi Talib says, Kalimatun Habbah Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to hear a slave praising him. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah really loves to see the slave whenever he eats something he praises him for that. He says, Alhamdulillah. Whenever he drinks something, he says, Alhamdulillah. Have a look at this fact. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to deprive you from food, how much should you pay to get it? As one of the king was reminded by a scholar, the scholar told him, Sir, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deprive you from a cup of water, how much should you pay to get it? He said, I am willing to pay half of my kingdom he says, actually not a cup of water, half of this cup of water. He says, I'm willing to sacrifice half of my kingdom to get half of a glass of water. He says, all right. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted you that one, you paid half of your kingdom to get half of a glass of water, but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refused to let it come out of you. How much should you pay to get it out? He said, I will pay the other half of my kingdom. That person told him, Sir, in Namulkan, La Yusawi Qarura Tama Lahariyun and Yuz Hadafi. A kingdom that is not even equal to the value of half of a glass of water, definitely is something that worth staying away from it. All of these things that you see, how much should you pay for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How much should you pay to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you to get it? Zero. Allah granted you the food. Allah granted you aql to differentiate between that which is beneficial and that which is uh, wrong you know, for you. And you do that which is beneficial to you and you stay away from the harmful one. How much you pay for this? Nothing. And you go to the bathroom, Allah granted you an excellent system that filter 
the one that is not supposed to stay with you and take it out of you. How much you pay for that? That's why the Prophet when he comes out from the bathroom, he used to say, Ghufranak. The scholar said it has two interpretations. The closest one is, this is just the Prophet asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of his sins. You know. Some of them said because now, uh, now at this moment the Prophet did not have the chance to make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the bathroom. Another interpretation says, he is referring to the fact that with all of these blessings, giving you the food and ability to take it out, the one that is not beneficial to you, but we are still not doing that which is uh, enough. You know. That is the wisdom behind that saying, Kufranak. You know. So Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who deserves to be praised. The ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the creation, uh, countless. He says, Rabbil Alameen. Rabb is the sustainer, the creator, the owner, and the one who provides everything for, the, for, the, for those whom he created. Al-alam kullu man siwa Allah azza wa jal. Alam is anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you say Rabbul Alameen, you're talking about the praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the Alameen. Alameen is anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we learn from this that Anything that is not Allah is created by Allah. We have only two things. Number one is Allah, and the other one is the one that is created by Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the only two things we have we found in existence. From here we learn the Tawheed of what? Tawheed al rububiyyah and Tawheed al uluhiya Tawheed al rububiyyah means Allah is the creator, is the owner, and is the one who controls. The only one who has the right to prescribe laws and regulations. Tawheed al uluhiya means Allah SWT is the only one who deserves to be worshipped and here you learn also sincerity and rejection of shirk in all of its forms. We take this from the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Lillah wallahu hu ma'khudhu min al-ilah wal ilahu hu al ma'lu. The word Allah is taken from ilah and ilah is derived from the word al ma'lu wal ma'lu hu hu al ma'budu bi haqqin. The one who deserves to be worshipped alone. So this ayah has a greater interpretation and a lot of lessons could be extracted from this ayah, from this ayah alone. But as I said, I will keep it inshallah. Brief, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good and success in life. Innahu kulli jameel and kafeel. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiru ka'atubi ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.